Go. Hi, my name is Ashley Parr. I'm a third year student at Elon DPT program, and I'm going to be reviewing today an article titled Pressure Changes Under the Ischial Tube Porosities During Gluteal Neuromuscular Stimulation and Spinal Cord Injury. A comparison of sacral nerve root stimulation with, surf with surface functional electrical stimulation. This article is uh, level four as it is a pilot study. And the main focus of the study was to look at patients with a complete suprasacral uh, spinal cord injury in which they're having issues. Uh, the common issue is that there's too much pressure underneath the ischial tuberosities. So as they looked at that, they wanted to see what they could do to relieve some of this pressure. And what they found was that they were going to try out either sacral nerve root stimulation, also known as SNRS, using a functional magne magnetic stimulator, FMS, or a sacral anterior root stimulator, SARS implant. In addition, they also looked at functional electrical stimulation and the uses of the FES, and that's what we're going to focus on today, as I do not have the capabilities to use the other equipment. So there are 18 subjects from the study, and they were from the ages of 18 to 65 years old, and they all had the suprasacral complete spinal cord injury. Functional electrical stem utilized large surface electrodes and a dual channel neuromuscular stimulator. The frequency was set at 20 hertz and 40 hertz. The maximum pulse was 100 milliamps, and the stimulation waveform was square with passive charge balancing. The stimulation and frequency were set at 20 hertz and 8 seconds. The amplitude was gradually increased to the patient's highest tolerance with a maximum of 9. Each patient was placed in the prone position with two large rectangle electrodes, 5 by 9 centimeters, which we were not able to use in this video, so we're going to pretend like they're there. Uh, we just used small square electrodes. These were both placed onto each side of the gluteus maximus. The stimulating anodes were then placed bilaterally just below the posterior superior iliac crest. The outcome measure studied includes the interface pressure under the ischial tuberosity. Interface pressure was defined as peak pressure, gradient at peak pressure, and average pressure. Peak pressure was measured with an individual sensor under the ischial tuberosity. Gradient at peak pressure was determined as the average difference between the values of the highest sensors and surrounding eight sensors. An average pressure was measured as the total pressure divided by the number of loaded sensors. As you can see in the results, there were no significant changes in the average seating pressure. However, there was a 22% average decrease of ischial tuberosity peak pressure during the functional electrical stem that I showed you earlier. Based off of this, uh, Based off of this article, you may think that you might want to use this, might want to use a functional electrical stem. However, I probably want to go ahead and use it in the clinical setting just because I have yet to learn about this in the classroom. Also, I want to do some follow-up studies just because this is, this is a pilot study. Also, with the no significant changes in the average seating pressure, that will lead to concern, concern about uh, the efficacy of this treatment.